With British Lion Shell Eggs, uh, we believe we will be able to continue the great progress. Consumers are eating more eggs now, they have confidence in eggs. Where I'm most concerned is for egg products, and, um, and that's based on um, various um, updates of a, an EU study we had done at the um, LEI at Wageningen in um, Holland on behalf of the European Association. And what it actually showed um, was that um, because of the UK and EU's high standards of animal welfare, food safety and environmental protection um, our cost of production are higher than some of our third country trading partners and we use four countries in the study we use Ukraine for obvious reasons being on our eastern uh, borders uh, we used India we used the States and we used Argentina and basically those four countries are the, the, the biggest exporters of, uh, of egg products to the European Union at any one point in time. And what it showed was each of those countries are so massively more competitive than us um, that left to the open market if our government post Brexit was to negotiate for example a free trade agreement with one of those countries um, then we could be left at a real disadvantage um, and of course any knock-on uh, uh, or, or any effects on egg products could have a knock-on effect onto the shell egg market so we are asking our government um, as we have asked successfully the European Commission to just to make sure that our high standards are recognized um, European and EU citizens expect those standards we're happy to deliver them uh, but what we mustn't do is leave our back door open to lower um, standard imports now we have new departments, uh, the Department for Exiting the EU, um, Department of International Trade led by David Davis and, and Liam Fox respectively. We're already in contact with them, uh, we're continuously in contact with DEFRA and other government departments and those discussions started almost the day after the referendum um, and they will continue and, and in fact as, as, as the UK government uh, more closely defines its um, uh, logic and how it wants to approach the negotiations, our lobbying of course will be upped but of course you know we still have um, the usefulness of um, myself and others being part of the European Egg Association and we will be using that vehicle as well to um, uh, press our case not just on behalf of the UK but what's good for the UK is also good for the EU and vice versa actually in many ways. Well look this is part of the largest consultation with NFU members in a generation uh, following the UK's vote to leave the European Union uh, we thought it was really important that we went out and talked to our 47,000 members and asked them what they want uh, post Brexit and it's very clear uh, that there is an ambition uh, that people see an opportunity uh, to change a whole range of things that impact their business uh, and hope that we can build a progressive uh, and profitable agriculture for the future and uh, today's meeting's really been about three things. It's been about uh, how we uh, trade with Europe and the rest of the world and, and the sorts of models we might end up with uh, when we get to the end of the uh, period of where Article 50 is being triggered at the end of the two years, what our trading relationship with, looks like with Europe, what it might look like with the rest of the world. But it's also about um, how uh, importantly poultry uh, growers and whether they're egg producers or whether they're poultry uh, meat uh, producers, how they can get access to labour and how the additional links in the chain can get access uh, to the right sort of labour uh, for the future. And I suppose the last thing then is about how we build a, a decent uh, and targeted uh, domestic policy for poultry uh, in the future. There'll be a, a whole range of views in, in the room today uh, about what we need for the future and, and it will probably take in things that don't immediately spring to mind when you start to think about uh, Brexit and you think about our relationship with the European Union. People will probably want to talk about planning, they'll probably want to talk about the other regulations that impact their business and that's why this meeting is so important because we can take what we hear today and it can provide a really strong platform when we go and talk to government when we say what this sector needs to continue to be the thriving success story uh, that it's uh, been for many many years. I think the sector's been very engaged uh, already. Uh, it's uh, because it's unsupported, because uh, those uh, businesses are, are close to the market. We, we already, I think, have a good sense of the sorts of things, the sorts of policy uh, that uh, the sector uh, will want uh, for the future. We're starting to get uh, quite a lot of information come back through our questionnaires, which uh, we've sent to every member in the country and which we've got uh, online. 
I suppose the difference today is we can really drill into to that detail. We can talk to those businesses and the businesses that are upstream and downstream of egg producers and really ask them uh, in detail what they would want uh, uh, from, for, for, for a thriving business for, for the future. And, and that's starting to come through loud and clear. But I would stress it's only the start of the process. There's, you know, I can see us having lots more discussions uh, with free range egg producers, uh, with their customers and with others to really bottom out the detail in all of this because it's still early days.